Hi there. I'd like to share four amazing things with you from Proverbs chapter 30. Look at verses 18 and 19, if you would. This is one of those numerical sayings of Augur that um, if you have viewed the others that we've been working through, uh, I believe this is our third numerical saying. It's a little cluster of uh, wise sayings. Um, two things I asked of you, don't refuse me before I die. That's, that's chapter 30, verses 7 and, and 8 and 9. That was our first one. And then we looked um, at uh, four insatiable things, four things that can never get enough. Now, this is our third numerical saying, verses 18 and 19 which uh, we'll simply entitle for, for giggles. We'll call it Four Amazing Things. Ah, there's that word, amazing. I don't, do you find the word amazing to be overused? I mean, really? Kind of like awesome? That's awesome? So, so I entitled this thing Four Amazing Things, but I maybe could have or should have called it four astounding things, four astonishing things, striking, remarkable, four fabulous things. There, that's what I should have called it, four fabulous things, um, four stupendous things, confounding, unprecedented, extraordinary, dazzling, electrifying, staggering, stunning, stupefying. That gives you time to open up your Bible to chapter 30 of Proverbs. And look with me, if you would, at uh, verses 18 and 19. Three things are too wondrous for me. Four, I can't understand. The way of an eagle in the sky. The way of a snake on a rock. The way of a ship at sea, and the way of a man with a young woman. Hmm. Now, before you think this has to do with an eagle, a snake, a ship, a man, I would just point out to you the word way. It's, it's the way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of that ship out at sea, the way of a groom and his espoused bride. It's the course of action that these four take. It's each of them are to the to the the writer of proverbs to agar they're 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 beyond his comprehension they're amazingly incomprehensible so let's take it one by one first the way of an eagle in the sky the way of an eagle in the sky i'm so happy to be living on Halfway Pond Road, where right nearby we have this eagle sanctuary. I believe I saw one in the in the sky the other day. And I'm on. I understand that the way to differentiate between a hawk and a vulture or, or a turkey vulture and um, and an eagle, the eagle's uh, wing spread is straight like a board. The, the others have a somewhat of a V formation, but. Um, the way of an eagle in the sky. Let's ponder that for a moment. Um, the eagle is a large bird. It's a heavy bird. When it comes to birds, um, I, I don't know how many of them get up to be between 7 and 14 pounds, like, like the eagle. 14 pounds of bird. That's a good-sized bird. That's the size of a, of a fairly good-sized bowling ball. 
the weight of one. The wingspan of an adult eagle reach seven and a half feet, seven and one half. And so think of your average six foot man and then tack another foot and a half on top of that. There are not a lot of basketball stars that reach seven and a half feet. There are a few, not many. It's, it's at the, the very you know, upper echelon, seven and a half feet wingspan, 14 foot bowling ball flying through the skies, soaring. And they do soar. They, they soar seemingly effortlessly. Uh, I understand the amount of flapping of their wings versus just motionless gliding of, of the wings is um, uh, very disproportionate. Almost no flapping, obviously, to launch from the nest to get airborne, but once airborne, then those thermal currents, those thermal uh, up, um, yep, thermal currents rising, lift them up and they'll travel from one current to the other. They reach a, a stupendous altitude of upwards of 10,000 feet. And from two miles away, they can spot a rabbit because their, their eyes are, are four to, to eight times as keen as, as yours and mine. By the way, talk to Alice. Alice from Iowa. Alice. Uh, follows the Decor Eagles there in Iowa via a 24-7 webcam mounted to a nest. And uh, she follows uh, uh, vigilantly the growth of um, the, the eagle eaglets from, from the time that the, the male and female eagle, who, who mate for life, by the way, um, from the time that the nest is, is created, the, the eggs are laid, and then the, um, that time span of um, gestation of the egg, and then the little guys emerging. So this week, Alice wrote to me and she said, the parent eagles, and they work together as a team in supplying uh, food and uh, security for their young, these eagles brought to the nest food, food in abundance. She said they carried up there not one fish or two or three. These eagles brought seven fish into the nest for their young. <laughs> the way an eagle in the sky the the author says it's just it's just beyond his his reach you can't quite grasp how wonderful that is that they just soar for hours at a time very rarely flapping their wings they're just just amazing creatures and they are the second the way of a snake on a rock the way of a snake on a rock Snakes often make their home in the rocks for several reasons. Um, being a cold-blooded creature, uh, they like to crawl in behind stones that will that perhaps warm up during the day and then keep them uh, warm. They make their hiding places in very convenient. Uh, uh, places where other creatures also habitate, like rodents. So you can picture uh, rocks being sort of a condominium complex for a number of animals, and there's the, the snake lying in, in a crevice in a very convenient place for when that, that rabbit, that, that rodent, um, goes by. Now, the way of a snake in the sand can be traced. But the way of a snake on a rock moving smoothly, efficiently, without, without limbs, 
without feet, um, leaving no trail. Augur says, this is a mysterious thing. This is, this is too wonderful for me to, to grasp it. The way of a ship on the sea. The way of a ship on the sea. Also leaving no trail, no trace, how it got there, um, how it moved from, from one point to another. Um, each of these, by the way, mastering a, a difficult element, the, the eagle mastering uh, two miles up, mastering that, that, that uh, um, snake on a rock, uh, most mountainous terrain, um, making it its habitat. The way of a ship, the ship mastering the, the, the oceans, the seas, um, while you and I have to stay in between the lines as we drive from point A to point B, these ocean-going vessels just plot their course. And um, they don't have those speed limits. They uh, um, are not faced with hairpin turns, uh, 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 guardrails. Um, these cargo ships float. That all by itself is an amazing thing. A multi-ton container vessel carrying upwards of 5,000 automobiles or more can somehow float on the water. And they do, going from continent to continent, bringing hundreds of thousands of containers just stuffed with uh, material goods from place to place um, and leaving no trace. Uh, and finally, the way of a man with a young woman. The way of a, of a man with his sweetheart. The way of a, uh, the progress of love. He says, this is, this is mysterious. This is incomprehensibly amazing. The way of love. The Song of Solomon. Charles Spurgeon says, is nestled right in the center of our Bible. And it's sort of a holy of holies. It's the holy of holies. The the central part part to to God's revelation to us. And I want to just read the um, a paragraph that forms the introduction to this, the non-inspired part of this um, that the editors of this particular Bible have supplied. A beautiful love song inspires us like grace, creating within us a, a desire for its beauty. Like such an enchanting love song, Solomon's song inspires a pursuit of the love it portrays. This romantic delight is not a modern fairy tale or fantasy from the past, but it reflects God's desire to form within us a pure and devoted love. We discover that there is a bliss in married love that is reflective of the greater love believers experience as the bride of Christ. As this book's imagery informs us of romantic love, it also helps us anticipate the full consummation of our relationship with Christ when he returns for his bride. Ah, oh, the way of a bride, the, excuse me, the way of a groom with his bride, with his espoused bride. What a mysterious thing. What a glorious thing. What a holy thing. What a stupendously amazing thing.